to Abuja, where we have um, standing by a policy analyst, um, a public um, affairs analyst, um, Ibrahim Garba, live from our Abuja studio. We're following uh, closely the reported relocation of agencies of government from Abuja to Lagos. Mr. Garba, thank you for joining us on the program this evening. Once again, thank you for having me. I'm wondering what side of the divide you are. Some are saying it's no big deal. Others are already crying foul as to the implication of this relocation. Oh, well, thank you once again. Um, a lot has been said about the relocation of uh, some of these uh, offices uh, to Lagos. Uh, like you rightly know, uh, former CBN governor, uh, Sunusi Lamidu Sunusi has came out uh, to speak strongly about this uh, movement because he should have done that uh, at that time he was the CBN governor because so many factors were in place. Uh, the CBN is undergoing a lot of uh, innovation and I will find out that um, there are so many idle hands doing nothing within the banking environment and if you need to you know, show up and innovate you need to think outside the box. So Lagos, as we know, is the fi uh, financial capital of Nigeria and it's one of the fastest growing economy across the world today. So you need to put all hands on deck. So taking this decision at this uh, critical time is not political. It is strategic so that we can attract investment at the same time work with agencies and banks in Lagos that are headquartered there. So, for so me, I feel we should not politicize this thing now. We should look at the importance of this decision and leverage on the opportunities which we have now, especially now that we are talking about foreign direct investment. Yes, we've listened to a lot of people, uh, especially from one senator of uh, the Federal Republic, who mentioned that these really will affect uh, the North. But beyond that, we went to town, we did some research and found out, you know, some of these politicians uh, influence appointment within the banking sector, especially the CBN. And you find that most of these people working within the banking area, you can do a checklist. They are virtually doing nothing. They are not adding value. Rather, we are paying for services that are not rendered. So you need somebody that will take a decision. And that will impact on the economy of Nigeria because uh, this government, as we know, is out to block all leakages. This government, as we know of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is out to help take us out of this difficult situation we find ourselves today. So I don't think uh, it is right for us to, to, to begin to politicize virtually every decision of the federal government. There's so much on our hands to talk about, especially now at this critical uh, period of our nation's history. But I'm sure you're following also the position of the Northern Senators Forum and the Chief Whip of the Senate, who uh, categorically mentioned that this decision will come with its um, political consequences. Uh, how do you um, explain to the Northern Bloc, who seem to have taken the position, uh, calling this a way to further underdevelop the North, how do you convince them otherwise? I think it's too early for us to conclude on the, the likely effect of this decision that was taken by the CBN governor. Remember, he's the governor of the central bank. He's working in the interests of every Nigerian. I will have CBN in major locations across the nation today. It's not about moving the entire CBN to, 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 to Lagos. And it's not about politicizing the whole thing. Like I heard them during the press conference talking about, okay, if uh, Mr. President will allow this to happen, definitely it's going to have vote, uh, affect the voting bloc coming from the north. That is political statement. But let, let us look at the real issues on ground. What are the things we need to do now? The Nigerian Stock Exchange is doing very well in Lagos. We have the Dangote uh, 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 petroleum, uh, indus, uh, rather petroleum industry in Lagos. We have so many businesses in Lagos that requires immediate attention. So, some of these, parasite, some of these uh, 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 units that were taken to Lagos is to facilitate I mean, smooth flow of business. In Nigeria today, we are talking about uh, the ease of doing business. So if at this point we don't take drastic decision to 
address some of these uh, anomalies, where do you think, uh, how, when do you think that will happen? So I think it is time for them to sit down with the CBN governor, ask questions. It's not about going on the media, uh, talk, and uh, you know, rubbish everything that is coming from parastatals and agencies of government. Remember, it's, they are operating independently. They are there to do checks and balances. If you take this decision, let's give it six months, let's give it 12, uh, 12 months, let's see what will happen. But that has right. not been taken into consideration. So concluding at this point, the decision which was taken, I think we should suspect there's a foul play somewhere within the rank and file of those northern senators, which I believe they are not speaking in the interest of the north. They are speaking rather on their personal times because they are serving senators in the National Assembly, and at the same time, they are not looking at the bigger picture. I think we should look deeply and at the same time understand the context to which uh, this decision was taken, which to me is about Nigeria. I, I hear you, Mr. Gabra. Let us look at the issue of um, revenue generation and cost reduction, which also is one important um, reason that have been given for this relocation. You heard the president talk mm -hmm. earlier about cutting down foreign troops and the number of people who should make such trips. How well is this administration doing in that regard? And what do you think must be done differently given the economic realities we're faced with? I thank you very much for this uh, question. Let me say this to you. Okay, look at the statistics. Nigeria today is ranked number one economy in the world, and at the same time, in Africa, sorry, and 39th in the world. You see, most of our purchases today are done, you know, within the banking sector and all that. But again, I will want to say this, it's time for us to think outside the box by looking elsewhere. As at the last time, as at June 2023, we have 161 companies listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and we have so many assets like oil and gas and all that. But again, there's one area that really concerns me. That is the informal sector. Earlier, some people talked about the informal sector, but they did not take time to go deep into the performance of the informal sector. And what do I mean? You see, the informal, I sat down with um, the, some of the executives of uh, you know, the Market Traders Association of Nigeria recently to ask them questions as a follow-up to a comment which was made by someone on the national TV disclaiming the rise of the so-called motopactals who were about to be reintegrated into a system so that they can be part and parcel of the revenue generation stream. And if you look at the informal sector, especially the markets which you have across the nation today, there's no reason why, for instance, we should go about borrowing money at this level, you know, based on the resources we have available. So if we are talking about influence, if you are talking about generating money, where do you go to? It's the informal sector. Dengote is part of the informal sector. Boa and all these companies across the nation, they are part of the informal sector. Why not leverage on these opportunities which they have? They are planning something like the Integrated Market Revenue Management System, which is part of the plan, the initiative they have, so that they can generate money through the informal sector. And I can tell you, all they need, the federal government need to do is to sit down with the members of this group because they are the largest ac across the nation today. Look at the, the opportunities which they have today in this country. Go to markets around Gielua, go to markets around Goronjo, go to markets around Damatru. You see onion export 200 trucks per day outside the country, you know, through the land borders to Ghana and from Ghana to Europe. Mm. Is that... Is that of advantage to Nigeria? Why not go through the land borders? The cargo planes coming into the country to dig to go back empty without you know, anything to go with. So we are looking at areas that we can, excuse me, which we can bring in resources. And I can tell you, the informal sector alone, if, if the federal government give a, you know, a target to FIRS, for instance, to generate 19.09 trillion in a year, 2024 alone, let me tell you, the informal sector alone can generate close to that amount and even beyond because they are organized. And at the same time, we have over 4,000 companies that are partnering and under one umbrella. 
So why are not government looking at these areas if we are looking at bringing in flows and leveraging on these opportunities because this is one area government never thought about. We don't have any reason to borrow money from anywhere because we have the assets, we have the management, we have the skills, we have the market, we have everything that will help Nigeria to grow up and become number hey, one clearly, Mr. Garber. in the whole of West Africa. That's so, about our yes. time. Public policy analyst Ibrahim Garba, we probably will have to count on the ability of this administration to take advantage of all the ideas we've listed. Thank you so much for talking to us yes. on the program this evening. Thank you. Let's turn our attention quickly now to Ondo State, where earlier in the week, Governor Aida Tua dissolved the State Executive Council and this was contained in a statement issued by his Chief Press Secretary, Ebenezer.